The Nintendo Switch is a phenomenon. The number of sold units has spiked incredibly high since it launched. It features one of the most varied game libraries I've ever seen. It has games that Nintendo consoles never had before. This new idea within Nintendo to have a Wii U in the size of a small tablet has brought them back on the front. But even though there are a lot of things to love about this little gem of a console, I was never able to place it over the Wii when talking about my personal favorite Nintendo consoles, even though it was very close. I never really looked into this up until recently, where I wanted to find out if there are maybe problems with the Switch. And boy, as it turns out, problems there are. Nintendo's recent design philosophy for games is really messed up. So today, we're going to talk about three of these design problems and obsessions within Nintendo. And we'll talk about why the Switch is still so popular, even though these issues could very easily corrupt the console on their own. So with that said, let's get started. Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64 is one of my favorite games of all time. It features many brilliant systems. The combat system, the partners you get on your adventure, the badges, items, abilities and so on are really well designed and define Paper Mario as a timeless classic, at least in my opinion. The progression in the game is amazing too. So, naturally, I wanted to play the sequels as well, since I thought, you know, they probably would go on with that trend that they started, right? Well, not quite. I was really happy when Nintendo announced Paper Mario the Origami King for the Switch, but then I realized that the game lacked in those systems that made the original game and the GameCube successor so great. The game literally features no progression. There are no badges and partners and even the classic combat system is lost in time. Instead, we now mostly travel through the world alone and only sometimes get companions that disappear shortly after instead of helping us on the entire quest. In combat, we don't gain any real benefit from those partners either. And instead of cool badges that can sometimes even unlock new attacks in the first two games, we now get weapons that break almost immediately after we get them. The only system that's the same, as far as I can tell, are the items, which can be bought and are helpful only once in battle. I was really disappointed and wondered why Nintendo designed the game like that. Actually, they designed every Paper Mario game like that after the GameCube entry. So why does Nintendo refuse to bring back the classic formula? I really couldn't think of the reason until I watched Sieve Gaming's video about this topic. Shout out to Sieve for figuring this out. Anyway. The problem is that Nintendo decided that players from now on shouldn't be engaged to play a game just so that they gain new abilities. They don't want that we play the game so that our character learns a new attack or something. They want us to play so much of the game as we feel like playing it. Take Mario Odyssey as an example. The game contains 999 power moons we can collect. But the last moon goal the game pushes us to is 500 moons to unlock Darker Side, the final level of the game. And the hardest one at that. After that, there are no more rewards for grabbing more moons. The only reward you might get is the fact that you are able to collect that many moons just by looking at the moon counter. But there's no in-game reward for collecting 999 moons. And that is just how Nintendo's recent games are structured. And you know, this approach in game design isn't necessarily bad, but if they want to put that into every game or franchise, even those like Paper Mario who just need them to work, then they ruin that game just because of this approach. Don't get me wrong, Origami King is a really, really good game. And even on the Metacritic page, it scored 90 points. 
but still, whenever I look at the game, I always think of what the game could have been, what score it could have got on the page if Nintendo wasn't that stubborn with this system. So here we have our first reason of this video. Nintendo forces all of their games to have no progression even if this ends up drastically hurting the game. Alright, so with that, let's move on to reason 2. Most Nintendo games on the Switch have a really weird trend. Almost all of them use the same simple to read font. No matter if we look at The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey or 3D World or even most of the other games, all of these have the same clean font. Even Super Mario Party, that party game that is supposed to be weird and quirky, also has that font. So I know what at least some of you want to ask me right now. Bavario, why are you talking about such a small problem in a video that is supposed to only cover three big problems with the game design? And you know, you're right about that. The real problem though is that this not only applies to the font in-game, but also the levels and objectives they design around it. Let's take a look at Bowser's Fury, the most recent Mario game. Basically, all islands in Bowser's Fury use the same five assets in the game. They use the same single color blocks over the game, they use the same enemies, and so on. A bunch of the assets are recycled and repeat themselves over and over. They don't even change the look of their islands anymore. You know, the roiling roller island could have been a spinning gears and screws above a poison lake. Instead, we have green and blue blocks that float above the lava. Mount Magmeo could have been a gauntlet similar to Luncheon Kingdom in Mario Odyssey, platforming over dangerous soup and platforms that flip between standable and deadly soup. Instead, we got a weird glowing block that doesn't feel any more special than just a small gauntlet to the top. You see where I'm going with this? Almost all Switch games contain at least one of those places that just want to be gamey with no code on top of them. On earlier systems, Nintendo always coded their objectives so that they don't feel the same. Just take a look at Mario Galaxy 1 and Mario Galaxy 2 for crying out loud. Every single objective there feels different. They often rather introduce new planets instead of reusing the old ones. But Bowser's Fury is basically the opposite. We have to bring a kitten to its mom nine times. We have to catch Shadow Luigi several times. And not a single other objective in the game is only used once. Nintendo has always been really careful about their gameplay. They want everything they put in their game to serve a purpose. If we see a flower circle in 3D World, then we can get coins by ground pounding into it. If there are flowers or bushes, then we can burn them down with fire flower and they often contain coins. Nintendo is so careful about this that everything they end up putting in their games has to serve a purpose in one way or another. And you know, I'm okay with that as long as they're still coding their objectives differently, like in Mario Galaxy. But recently, they figured out that coding doesn't actually add anything to the gameplay. You know, what benefit do you have platforming through a volcano rather than a glowing block? Actually, nothing in terms of gameplay. And so they decided to try to remove this coating from parts of the game. They tested this in Breath of the Wild with the shrines and in Mario Odyssey with a couple of sub-areas and the Scarecrow challenges. And it looks like they weren't worried too much since they decided to create Bowser's Fury this way too. I honestly hate this. All of the objectives and levels being basically the same ruins the entire game alongside its magic. I really hope that Nintendo drops this approach in the future and that they either go back to the Mario Galaxy approach or that they drop the approach with making everything serve the gameplay in some way and instead focus more on the coding of the objectives. Though 
I think the first object is likelier, since Nintendo has used this design approach from the very beginning. And you know, it's not even that I hate Bowser's Fury. I actually really like the game. When it came out, I played it like 5 times just because I want to. And since it is so quick to be beaten, I consider speedrunning it one day. I haven't done it yet, but you know, maybe in the future. But the game could have been so much better if Nintendo just decided to code their objectives. Because even if that doesn't change the gameplay in any way, it does add magic to their games. And without that, they just feel generic. So here we have our second reason of why the Nintendo Switch is not my favorite console. Nintendo recently quit making their objectives differently through coding, which makes an otherwise great game have ruined objectives, like Bowser's Fury has. Alright, let's now move on to the last and most important reason why the Switch is not my favorite console. Games having some sort of online support or game mode is pretty much the norm for most game publishers at this point. Even Nintendo applied their games to that trend, but sadly their online management is probably the worst I've ever seen. And I'm not the only one to say that. A lot of people think that there are tons of problems with the service, but I think that it is not even the worst part. The worst part of this is that it ruins games which otherwise could have been great or instead just make them not possible to be played unless for a specific timeline. The best way to show this is to just take a look at the original Mario Maker for the Wii U. Super Mario Maker 1 is a game where you can create your own Mario levels and share them online. The level sharing is basically the biggest part. Getting people to play your level and reacting to all the different opinions shared, it's most of the time a very good feeling. Actually, it's the same as uploading videos on YouTube, at least to me. So now, we have a game almost completely based on the functionality. Naturally, based on its overwhelming popularity, it would make sense to keep it online for several years and add new stuff for people to enjoy playing it. Naturally, Nintendo obviously did basically the opposite. In 2019, only about four years after Mario Maker 1 was released, Nintendo published the sequel on the Switch, Super Mario Maker 2. At this point, Nintendo didn't even add new content to the game since 2017, even though the game was at the height of its popularity around that period. In March of 2021, there was still a big number of people playing and enjoying the game, as well as the levels that were made by other people. But Nintendo still stuck to the plan of shutting the online part down on the 1st of April. And they did it, despite many fans complaining. They basically forbid a big number of people enjoying the game to use it anymore. Because if the game is mainly based on online levels and sharing other things, then the rest of the content is pretty basic and isn't worthwhile playing anymore. All that is left is basically playing your own levels or the tutorial levels by Nintendo. And that's it. The other parts of the game are completely unusable. Mario Maker 1 was definitely a phenomenon, but it could have been even better if Nintendo would have just maintained the game and kept it going for longer. Maybe game publishers and developers do that same thing. These games stay up for a long time for people to play. But Nintendo is just so stubborn to shut down the online games sooner than they ever needed to be. And sadly, that is going to be the case for all current online games or games having online features. Mario Maker 2 has already received the final update and I doubt that we'll see any more or even DLC for the game. The same is true for Splatoon. Splatoon 2 is only 4 years old and they already announced a third entry in the series. Looking at the history of Mario Maker, 
I would say that Nintendo probably goes down the same road with that. But in all honesty, this one huge problem isn't even the biggest one. You know, as long as they're willing to develop sequels, it's at least not completely lost in time. But the real problem are those games that Nintendo definitely won't make a sequel to, but still shut down really quickly, like Mario 35, which straight up can't be played anymore. Or those that are just a limited release, like Super Mario 3D All-Stars. If you didn't buy this loveless Mario collection, you can't play it in the future. I'm almost glad that they didn't put any effort into this limited release, because a well-made limited release game would have hurt any even more. But honestly, if you think about it, there are some well-made things that likely won't stay forever. Like, what will happen to those couple retro remakes you can only access with the Switch Online service? Or those other games that added online support? I really hope that Nintendo doesn't delete them out of existence. Unfortunately, this isn't likely, as Nintendo has done this several times before. So, here we have my final reason why the Nintendo Switch isn't my favorite console. Nintendo's online management literally leads to games becoming impossible to be played. So, is there any hope? You know, is there any chance that Nintendo will drop these problems in the future? Well, it's obviously impossible to know for sure. Honestly, all I can do is to hope that Nintendo drops these issues for their next console, if not earlier. The only reason why the Switch ended up being such a success was many of the good games featured on the console that didn't have these issues I just talked about. And just the concept itself led tons of people to buy the thing. So even though the Nintendo Switch is a phenomenon and has incredible sales numbers, I still think that it could have been better without these issues if Nintendo just wasn't that stubborn company that wants to stick with old stuff instead of inventing new stuff. Because if they actually did do this and drop all the problems, then a Switch 2 without these problems I just talked about could easily be the number one for me, unlike the original Switch did. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for everyone for helping getting the subscriber count to 50 by the way. This is an insane milestone and I'm glad that we finally made it to this point. Thanks to everyone who subscribes and is still there up until this day. So if you want to get the subscriber count even higher, which would desperately help me, then consider subscribing. It's free, it takes a second for you and it helps me out a lot like I just said. Let me know if you liked this video or didn't like this video by leaving a like or dislike respectively and leave me a comment about what your favorite Nintendo console is and what do you think of these problems. Do you share that same opinion or do you think those aren't issues at all? Thank you so much for watching guys and until next time.